Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss the topic how to make a website load fast. Making a website is just one thing, but making it right is just another. Often people think that they will get huge traffic, high number of purchases and revisits from their previous customer when they make a website. But that's only possible when you make the website in the right way and with the right approach. Often a slow loading website irritates the customer and forces them to leave the website without making any purchase or any significant event that can benefit your business. And research we have shown that out of every four people, one will leave your website due to its slow speed. So considering all these facts, you might be thinking right now that it's, it has huge impact on your business negatively and how you can make it fast. So I'll relax, we are here to explain you the ways with which you can make it load faster. So basically we have three major steps involved in a page load. Whenever a user types URL of a website, then the website is retrieved from the DNS server. So the first step is connection with the server and code retrieval. Okay, and this is basically a simple and straightforward process and doesn't involve much of your consideration. But these two steps, the next two, that is passing of the code by web server and content retrieval and display needs or attention and then that can make a difference in your website load speed. So in passing of the code by web server, the things that can improve your website speed considerably are like you have any web website plugins involved in WordPress and others also. So plugin adds to the latency of the website. Whenever your browser is decoding the web code to display it in human understandable format, then plugins add to latency. And also it, the browser reads your code line by line. Say this is the line, this is the line. So if I add unnecessary breaks here and spaces, then it adds to latency again. So there should not be unnecessary breaks in CSS and JavaScript. Also, when you have plugins or external calls for say you want to have a link for Facebook that will retrieve something back to your web page or you want to have a Twitter uh, link in your website or anything like that. So if you have high number of external calls, then to load the website, those calls should be completed properly and the data should be retrieved back. Then only your web page will be completed. So you should avoid high numbers of external calls. Also, HTTPs with no alive response header should not be there. What it means is whenever an HTTP code is read by your browser, it makes a connection with your server from where the data is traveling back. And it is one-time event. So every HTTP will make, a one, make one connection with your server and then break it. Then again make it, then break it. But with no alive response header, uh, sorry, with alive response header, what it does is it makes a continuous connection. It's like a continuous call to the server and it doesn't break it again and again. So there will be reduced latency and the website will load faster. So third step where you can save the time uh, is content retrieval and display. So when once all these steps are done and all the links and all the calls have been made, then the content will retrieve and will be displayed to the user. So if you have uncompressed data files traveling over the server, then it will involve, it will consume your huge bandwidth and it will slow down the website load process. Also, if you have high load on server and server is not responding to the calls, then again you will have a poor speed of your website load. And image size also matters, like a lot of time what people does is they upload their images uncompressed without reducing the uh, size. So again, huge size means huge, travel, huge data coming to your uh, browser from your server and it will involve a huge uh, time lag. Also no use of cache. What you can do with cache is, cache stores the web code locally at your browser. So if you have implemented cache properly, then every time when you say you visited a website and uh, the previous day and now again you are visiting the website. So if you have cache implemented, then it will not involve making a connection to your main server but it can retrieve the code from the cache itself so it will save you a lot of time also if you want to make your website really cool and really fast then you can use content delivery network also what it means is say you have one main server okay and there so it is located in mumbai now you have uh, a user and say 
जयपुर और से इन दिल्ली सो एवरी टाइम इफ यू हैव कंटेंट डिलीवरी नेटवर्क देन स्मॉल सर्वर्स विल बी प्लेस इन डिफरेंट सिटीज एंड वेन एवर ए यूजर फ्रॉम से से जयपुर इज trying to load the website and it will not connect to mumbai web server which is a main web server but if you have many servers located at different places then it will it will make a call to the nearest available server okay so in this case if we have a server in jaipur only then it will approach here and this server will be in sync with your main server that is located in mumbai so by having a content delivery network you can give users a very good experience and your website will really load fast so now you might be thinking that how can i know where the problem lies in my case well it's pretty simple you can visit the links mentioned below and have a diagnosis of your website and these tools will let you know where the problem lies in your case and if you find that everything is working fine from your end then there might be a problem from the server end and if that's the case then you can have a fast running ssd enabled server from a trusted provider where you can be rest assured of the server speed and your website's overall performance So if you like the video then do like share and subscribe to our YouTube channel thank you